Yeah, so. What are you doing, Dad? Well, it's an excess felt, excess hole in this thing. I'm going to get these plugs out. Mm -hmm. So you're holding it, the tap in the chuck. You tap in the plug. The other side now. You, you understand? Oh, okay. It's out now. You gotta do that. Screw this prick in. Hey? And that'll pull this thing out. This plug once these are released. Hard bastards to get apart these pricks of things. Worst. They copied a, a uh, Cadillac diff when they made this diff. Uh -huh. General Motors couldn't think for themselves. Too fucking dumb. <laughs> Cadillac's the same design. Yeah. But only bigger. Okay. Now, yeah. we'll just keep this a bit of tight. Ooh. You already did that, didn't you? I'm sure. You're going to right slow speed. And high speed trouble. So you can like that. No, oh, it's on thirty-five, that's right. Take the tap out. I'm going to give it out later. I'll put it in the box. Okay. <clears throat> so. Take this over there to the vice. And uh, come over. Give me fucking drink. Whoop. Takes a long time to find tools in this place. Oh. Yeah, this first hole in the was made in FX 1948. Yeah. They started calling them, I think it was uh, uh, five twenty one forty eight. I think it's five to five passengers. 21 horsepower. 
Well, you want horsepower. Mm, little engines, little six-cylinder motors. What's 48 for? Yeah. 1948. Just got to make sure that this is actually going to reach that cross shaft. We'll have to cut it back, remember? Well, we could stick a uh, stick something down there to find that out, I suppose. 24 horsepower. Shit, the Holdens now have like 800. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's why they're all killing themselves. One after the other. Down Albert Park in the uh, Grand Prix. I think this will reach, actually. Maybe they'll find out. We just have to change something. Nah, it won't reach. We can just put a bun down there. Um, there's a bit of stuff over here on this press. Just put that down there on the cross shaft. On the gazing of minor diameter slime, that is. And there's something here that might do that. Yeah, do you want me to pause it? So Dad told me to pause it because he's looking for something. But while he's looking for something, this is a lapper, a police lapper. Coming! Oh, found something that'll fix it. Right. So we'll just put this in here. Use a tape tape and buns. Bastard of an idea. <coughs> yeah. Hmm. See that? Pop. What's the old man do this? Years ago. See? A tape that goes into the the cone. Uh-huh. So I'll get the magnet. So this is what's in there, right? Eh? Tapered bung. They made some drilled holes. See these holes there? Mm -hmm. These geniuses made these holes. They had to put some special tool in there to drag them out. Right. Well, all I had to do was put a thread like that. Yeah. Make a conventional puller like anyone else would. <laughs> oh, no. It's real difficult. <laughs> do it the easy way. They purposely go about doing things the hardest way known to mankind for some reason. Just to root everyone up. Put that in there. Must be the bird stopping that. Well, at least back then, Dad, they didn't design shit real bad where it just fails. You know, like a VE or something. A ZF div. Yeah, well, we can horsepower things. Yes. I can't believe 24 horsepower. It wouldn't even go up a hill. Yeah, see, there's the other one. One more idea is let these but these little shims. Just to be careful we don't uh, mix up the shim come out of which side. Look at that for you.
These are the shims that the rocket scientist designed. Yeah. We should drive people insane. 70 years ago when they were working on them. <laughs> 1948, yeah, that's right, 70 odd years ago. Now you got this one here, and you got that on that side. So that was a difficult thing to do. To, um, Look at that, instead of having a bearing journey, they just got right. the, the cup in there. You've got to keep them to the correct side so you can hang them up on a nail or something. What a funny way to make a diff. Well, it was. Back to front. So, so that's how they made it. You see, instead of bearing caps with threads, they did all this ass about way. Um, now, these are 9 sixteenths. Haven't altered too old for that. Yeah. That would normally fall on the floor, that. That's when you like to go. <laughs> yeah. Remember we were going to talk about putting like a square bar along here so shit doesn't fall off? Mm, do that one day, in your time. Not too bad to condition these planetary gears. They just need cleaning up and maybe slightly thicker washing put in. We'll get them all out of here in a second. Let's see if that pin punch fits that. Mm, pin punch stuck up. Oh, what's that one? That's the one I straightened up the other day, I think. Some of these holdings had a little tiny thread in here and I used to put a screwdriver, a bladed screwdriver like that and screw it down. It used to have a tip. It had a tip in the, um, a blind hole in here that it used to screw down in, in, into. Oh. And so they got done little changes on the XF. Brass washers, same ferrical curve, I think, as uh, the roaches and the steel ones, you see? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> These are brass. But anyway, so as I say, these uh, cones have got tapered balls, that's why the number ends with T. Mm -hmm. Made in England. 19150T. E for taper. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is all loose. We go on top, stop that. Should I stop it or just yeah, pause just it? Stop it. No more filming. Well, we'll continue on to get this thing apart. Okay. So do we I film that though? The door. Ah, more toys. More toys for me. Thank you! Ugh. Toys, toys, toys. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the joys of ordinary ordering shit online. You don't even have to go shopping anymore. You just do it all while you work. And it all comes to you. <laughs> Is 
So, you can see in the up in here, I pulled that pinion out of there. Mm -hmm. Ball bearing goes there, and a parallel roller bearing runs on that, directly right. on the shaft. There's some foreign matter up in here. Now, what would that be? Hey, look at all that. What is it? What is it? Well, I know what it is. It's the shims. Oh. Which was put up on here, mm -hmm. set the pinion, that sets the pinion depth, as well as, um, that's all it sets, actually, the pinion depth, because it doesn't matter how tight you tighten up, the double row ball bearing can't tighten up. No. It just takes end thrust and radial load. I missed his eye, oh, it's come off there, I think, is it? No, it's still there. So, so do uh, you, you, you screw this bolt down? And adjust the bearing position. Just hold the bearing in place. Oh. We'll get that off there. Seal. Ball bearing, see? Mm-hmm. Anyway, we'll get a 916 spanner which ain't here. I think it's 916, these lock nuts. Hmm. Hmm. You're a half inch, those ones from memory. <coughs> There's a chamfered washer in there. These ends of these bolts have got a, an angle. Yeah, just, we'll, um, watch the bearings. We'll get that. We'll get that bearing out of there. Um, it's funny. Huh? How it doesn't have two tapered roller bearings like normal diffs. Oh, Why would they want to fuck around doing that for? Making it all different. Well, that's their line of thought was at the time. Do it this way. There's no, no circuit holding this in either. Red foam or a tap put in there. I don't know. Right. So, I wonder if you can here. convert this to have tapered rollers. Uh, no, you can't. Too much rooting around. This bearing just taps straight out of here. Oh, you can use one of those if you wanted to. <laughs> There's the, uh, that's the, the washer, mm -hmm. which has got the chamfer on it, see? Yeah. Fits in like that. Oh, yeah. Pushing up against that bearing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a high capacity bearing, this. Oh. You've got to be very careful when you put one of these together. You don't put, you put that to the front. The constant thrust. If you put it around that way, you've seen them blow up this bearing because the constant thrust on that little cutout there mm. breaks the balls down. Why well, have they got the cutout for? Well, so they can load it up. Put, put them all into those cages. Oh. So they've got that, they have a little tiny cutout there. But that little cutout will, will 
damage the bearing eventually. It's all right for the overrun when the not so much uh, end thrust. So it's been in. I'm pretty sure it was in that correct way. Where'd you get this diff from? Ah, oh, it's over on the shelf. But that's the way you got to do it. You got to have the thrust that way. So that's that's going on there like that. See. Mm -hmm. And on the overrun, that gets slightly loaded up, but nowhere near as on the drive. Just a slip on fit that. But um, there's a few different types of these bearings. Some don't have as many balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This also fits a MGTC. MGTC split in half. Didn't have any of that loading facilities. They split in half, but you can use that in an MG, provided you uh, put it back in the same way as I just suggested. Uh -huh. So anyway, so what we're going to do here, clean all this stuff up, do a good bit and put the thoughts in good condition, this crap, a lot of surface rust on this. <coughs> I'll do a wire brush. <coughs> What a weird way to make a diff. Every other diff today, the carrier has a journal and a tapered roller bearing goes over the journal. Like that. See the journal? That's a journal. And the bearing knocks on the journal like that. But, this 1948 Holden doesn't have a journal. The bearings knock in to a bore. And the same with that side. Isn't that weird? What a weird way to make a diff. Those bearings are a bit rooted, aren't they? these funny plugs you can't get these plugs out that's why dad tapped a f those threads in there so you can grab it with this uh, tool what do you do with the tool the puller there it is see the puller you screw the puller in there that's the puller Screw that down there and it pushes and that end of that thread there pushes down on the down there onto the face of the side gear and pulls it out. Is it okay? Got some slight pit marks there. That's where the bearing runs, yeah. First time I've seen it. They normally don't ever wear out that bearing. Um, it's just like a, a Ford F-150 axle, <laughs> you know? Well, it is. How the... It's in good condition, the teeth. Well, that bearing has shifted along, started running up there. <laughs> Well, it was loose, wasn't it? Well, they don't have anything holding them in. Let's have a look. Uh, well, I didn't think the bear ran so close. Anyway. Hot wash.
Do I stop filming or? Yeah. Okay.